Because tonight I'm talking about identity. So just uh, give me my scripture. I'm just going to jump into it and do this for 15 minutes. And then we're going to shout some more. Just give me the, what's, where, where the scripture at? I'm staying right here. Somebody say, stay right there, Bishop. Beloved, now are we the sons of God. It does not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is. I felt that in my belly. Can I read it again? Beloved, now are we the sons of God. And it does not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is. I want to talk for just a moment about a subject called the identity code. The identity code. Father, I bless your name. I thank you that your glory is here. Let your power continue to fall. Anoint me afresh to preach this word with power. And we'll be careful to give you all the glory, the honor, and the praise in Jesus Christ's name. All that agree, say it is so. And so it is. On the way to your seat, say the identity code. you got to understand something that the body of Christ has lost its identity. And many of us are in an identity crisis. And when you're in an identity crisis, the enemy knows that you'll, you'll do anything. There are certain things that you'll engage in. There are certain people you'll connect to. There are certain folks that you'll talk to when you're not quite sure who you are. The moment that you get into a revelation of who you are, your life becomes more strategic and it gains a level of clarity. When you see people who are constantly all over the place, and ain't nothing spiritual about being all over the place. God does not have spiritual nomads. And what do I mean by that? Every week, God is saying something to you different. This week, God said, that's your husband. The next week, God said to leave him alone. The week after that, the Lord said to evangelize him. The week after that, the Lord said, I was just kidding. That's really your husband. Every week, you got a different testimony from the Lord. There is nothing spiritual about being unstable. The Bible said a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways, which means every decision that I make should come from a rooted and grounded identity. I feel good already. Every decision that I make should come from a rooted and grounded identity. Do you know some people have a hard time telling the devil no because they don't know who they are? Some people have a hard time telling the devil no. When you begin to mature in your identity, you have the power to say, that just ain't for me. But come on, church. There's just there's some things that just ain't for me. There's some places I'm just not going to go. There's some places I'm just not taking my anointing. Now, see, when you're young and you're trying to figure certain stuff out, there's certain stuff you're just willing to do. But there's certain places I ain't going to in this season. It's quiet in here. I said there's certain places I'm not going to in this season. I ain't about to be sitting up in every club. I ain't about to be sitting up in every club. You sit up in the club. Every club, they, they know you coming. They know your car. They be looking out the window at hydrate. There she go. <laughs> you late tonight. Every, every night. There's certain stuff that you would do. You know, do you understand that when you know your identity, you won't lay down with everybody? When you know your identity, you don't mind closing your legs. When you know, listen, when you know your identity, you won't do something strange. When you know your identity, you have the power to say no. You can't say that's not for me if you don't know who me is. You got to know who you are. Look at your name and say, know who you are. When you understand the power of identity, identity has the authority. I feel the anointing. Something about to break up in here. Identity has the power to rebuke everything that's coming against you. Now, how does the enemy attack identity? How does the enemy attack identity? The enemy attacks identity, watch this, through disruptive and satanic familial structures. The enemy attacks identity through disruptive familial structures. So what am I trying to tell you? Through, 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 through toxic family culture, the enemy messes with people's identity. Through toxic family culture, uh, immediately what begins to happen is you have to war through the ghetto side of your family and the spiritual side of your family, and you have to figure out, depending on what mood you're in, which side is going to come out. Am I going to be Peter today? Am I going to be John? Am I going to cut some ears off today? Y'all ain't going to tell the truth up in here. I know you think that you only resemble the saved side of your family, but there's some hood in there too. It's some hood that's got to stay all the way under the blood. It's an identity war. It's an identity war. You ever been in an identity war? Of course you have. 
When you were in traffic and they cut you off, you were in an identity war. Because you had to figure out, who am I going to be in this moment? When you were at work and you found out that they lied on you and told the supervisor, you were in an identity war. Because something in your spirit said, turn this whole place out. Something in your spirit said, turn up for Jesus. Turn, flip tables. I'm a table flipping Christ today. This ain't the crucified one. This is the table flipping one. This is the come through the temple with a whip. Jesus came in the temple spanking folks. Identity. Finding an identity. Figuring out your identity. The assignment of your family. And this is the problem. Oh, man. I'm out here. If you plan on having kids, adopting kids, fostering kids, and you don't have the gift of discernment, stop. Because without the anointing of discernment, you are not, you are not grooming a child to be a child. You are grooming a human that must come into their identity and contribute to society. It's so quiet in here. The problem is, is that for many of you, your parents raised you to be a child. Not to be a functional thinking adult. Some of us, when we, we, we were grown, we found out what credit was. And it was already messed up. Mama may have messed it up. Yeah, cable in your name and light bills, water bills. <laughs> All the above because of an identity crisis. Do you know that's why the enemy fights? That's why the enemy fights the African American community through an identity crisis. Oh, I feel God in here. An identity crisis. An identity crisis is what keeps a people bound, it keeps a people fighting each other, it keeps a people contending against each other. Because when we don't know who we are, we begin to fight against each other because we become threatened by each other. Oh, Lord, help us. Tonight, we become threatened by somebody else's business succeeding. We become threatened by somebody else winning. We become threatened by somebody else getting married. When you understand who you are and you understand whose you are, you begin to realize that identity is key in order for me to have the victory in my life. Identity is key. Identity is key. I, I pray that somebody gets this. Do you not realize that the assignment, many of us grew up in churches that had no identity. It was a generic church. And nobody had, to, that's why the prophetic is so powerful. Because the prophetic gives identity to people. It helps to bring actualization to the reason why you were born. It helps to identify who's doing something they weren't called to do. It helps to identify who's operating in something outside of their purpose and the reason they were born. That is the purpose of the prophetic. Somebody shout the prophetic. The prophetic brings forth identity. So now, I want you to see this. And, 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 and I want you to really hear this. I don't have time to go there. But the Bible said in Galatians chapter 5 that the works of the flesh are obvious. When you are operating in the flesh, I'm going to break it down for you. It ain't about sinning and you just doing what you feel like doing. When you are operating in the flesh, you are falsely searching for identity. Yeah. Are falsely searching for identity when you are operating in the flesh the works of the flesh are made manifest and I want you to catch this tonight the works of the flesh are obvious and when you begin to operate in the spirit of pride the spirit of pride is hindering many of you all from walking in your identity you think it's humility but it's false humility oh can't nobody do false humility like church folk Church folk are masters at false humility. Well, you know, I don't want to get up and, and speak and say nothing uh, because, um, you know, I just, 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 I just don't feel it's my season. I just don't, I just don't want to go forth. No, you don't want to embarrass yourself. You, you, you have taken on the responsibility of maintaining a public image. And the moment you start maintaining a public image, you are already in the flesh. Listen to me, IG generation. Listen to me, Clubhouse generation. Listen to me with all of your portfolio and your pictures. You are trying to manage how people perceive you, and you are already getting in the flesh. That's why the Bible said Jesus made himself of no reputation. Because the moment you start protecting a reputation, you go against the move of God. 
A reputation keeps you entrapped to who you have always been known to be. So the moment you are entrapped by who you've always been known to be, when God tries to shift you in another direction, you resist it because you are trying to protect a public image is pride. You can't even focus on the word because you're checking how many likes you got on your new profile picture every five seconds. You can't focus on the word because you're trying to see how many people done looked at your video. You think they're looking at their Bible app? Eh. They're looking at Instagram. Somebody, you a public figure. Everybody trying to get a blue dot. Everybody chasing clout and no cloud. Chasing position and no power. Chasing access and no authority in the realm of the spirit. Reputation can give you access. But a posture of authentic humility gives you authority. I was so moved this week when I looked online and Juanita Bynum, prophetess Dr. Juanita Bynum, who is a New York Times best-selling author, who is a Grammy Award-winning gospel artist, who has preached in every country that you can think of, who has traveled all across the world, who is a global ambassador, been on the cover of Essence and in Ebony Magazine. She said, I'm 62 years old and I've done all that and my pastor set me down. She said, and guess what I did? I set myself down. When we reached out to Christopher Pina, her manager, to bring her to habitation, because I said I want in person, I want a virtual. <laughs> they said she's been set down. And she said, guess what I did? I set myself down. She said, because the problem with this generation is we got so big and we're so self-important, and what we have done is we have produced a bunch of arrogant nobodies. If you are bigger than correction, you're too big. If you are bigger, listen, if you're too big to be rebuked, you're too big. I don't care how much money you make. I don't care how much people like you. I don't care how many likes you got on your Instagram. If you are not submitted to authority, then eventually you will become a platform for Satan to manifest himself. With your tongue talking self. Because you need somebody outside of yourself that can tell you you're in the spirit of error. You need somebody that can tell you outside of you. I'm a pastor and a bishop, but I got a pastor. And my pastor has the authority to tell me to shut up. <laughs> I'm grown. Ain't nobody going to tell me to sit down. Can I tell you something? Identity and influence cannot be stolen. It must be passed down. I'm not talking about anybody disrespecting you, but if you're too busy trying to protect your reputation and trying to protect who people think you are, you don't have anybody in your life that can tell you, listen to me carefully, that you have a nasty attitude. Yes, you speak in tongues, but you have a bad attitude. Yes, you can dance. Yes, you can prophesy. Yes, you can sing, but you are oilless. All riffs, all runs, no power. And you need somebody who can tell you that. country and I'm seeing all these people doing these oh, I'm looking all over this country and I had to call somebody today I had to call somebody today they were doing a conference and they wanted me to be a part of the conference I'm gonna keep it real they wanted me to be a part of the conference I said I said bro we're gonna do this conference and you want me to be a part of this conference I said we can't have no pixelated flyers uh, we got to do stuff for the spirit of excellence, excellence. Yeah. we can't be stealing abstract photos from off of uh, Google say that yes I can because whenever you've been processed you get an eye for excellence whenever you've been processed you understand that God don't want you to produce anything rushed hallelujah when you've been processed you understand God does not want you to do you not understand that a meal that's not fully cooked can kill somebody something that has not been fully processed can kill somebody are you listening to me tonight I want you to hear this and this is what begins to happen in the body of Christ we got all of this rinky-dink stuff, and it ain't God. I said, it's not God. It's not God. And it's going to be you and the same two people. Talking about it's an international conference, and it's three people there. The same people. And most of y'all in the room related. They 
That's not fruit. That's obligation. And probably with a hint of witchcraft. I'm telling the truth. And the enemy does not want you doing it. Listen, do you not realize that in certain seasons, if you be still and submit yourself, God will multiply what you're doing. If you will sit still and hear the voice of God, I wish somebody would catch what I'm saying in the spirit. If you would sit still, there are things that God will multiply for you in the realm of the spirit. Somebody shout, be still. Be still. Can I tell you, there are three ways in which the Lord processes you into identity. I want you to hear this tonight. There are three ways in which he processes the body into identity. Because what is my identity? The Bible said it's in him that we live. It's in him that we move. And it's in him that we have our being. So what is my identity? Jesus Christ. Oh, Lord. I wish somebody would hear this. So look, look at somebody and say, listen to that yellow Negro. I wish somebody would hear me tonight. Your identity is Christ. Not Stephen Furtick. Not T.D. Jakes. Not even Juanita Bynum. Your identity is Christ. So what are you trying to say? That if it does not line up with the standard, I wish somebody would hear me, of being saved, if it is outside of the ramification of coming in alignment with the identity of Christ, it should not be named among you. I say, Lord, make me a Christian. Because we got a lot of folks that come to church that ain't Christian. They are not Christian. Do you respond the way that Jesus responded? Do you act the way that Jesus acted? Is the personality of Christ in you? Are you submitted? Are you humble? Does pride control you? Do you not know how to talk to people? Speaking in tongues and mean. Ah. Come on, church. Come on. And mean. I want you to hear this tonight. Is the identity of Christ in you? Mm. Well, how do I get the identity of Christ? There are three ways that have been designed to mold us into the identity of Christ. I'm going somewhere. It's going to bless you in a moment. Three ways. The fivefold. The fathering nature of God. And fire. Fivefold fathering and fire. I'm about to run. How does the fivefold mold us? Ephesians chapter 4, verse 13. What does it say? We have, I believe we have that Ephesians 4 and 13. It says, watch this. Till we all come in the unity of the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, that word perfect in the Greek means mature, a mature man unto the measure of the stature of T.D. Jakes. Unto the measure of the stature of what he divides. Unto the measure of the stature of Stephen Furtick. Unto the measure of the stature of your own opinion. Because I don't think nothing wrong with me. I don't think I got an attitude problem. You're not experiencing you. You didn't cuss you out. You cussed us out. Well, I don't think I got a bad attitude. Do you know the only way that you can be safe from the spirit of deception is that you have to have somebody's opinion that you trust more than your own? Do you know the only way you can be safe from the spirit of deception is you must have somebody's opinion you trust more than your own. If you are the highest opinion in your life, then you are susceptible to deception. You must have somebody that you allow to come to you to say, listen, I love you. But the Lord said that you need to stop doing what you're doing. Because if you're the highest opinion, you're going to say, I don't think anything wrong with what I'm doing. A man's ways is always right in his own eyes. The heart is deceitful and desperately wicked because it deceives itself. You need somebody that can come to you. I'm in the book. You need somebody that can come to you and say you out of order. You lied right there. That was deceptive what you just did. measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. And Christ is not Jesus' last name. It, for the record, it's not Jesus' last name. It means the anointed one and his anointed. Not your gift. Not your gift. 
the anointed one and his anointing. Whenever you see Christ, it says the anointed one and his anointing. To the fullness of his anointing. And it can't come without the crushing. Anybody you see that's anointed went through something. Anybody you see that's got oil has been crushed. And see, we want gift, but we don't want oil. Because see, the gift, you ain't got to do nothing for the gift. But the oil requires for you to be crushed, which means I am crushed into Christ. Every time he crushed me, I'm crushed into Christ. How? Well, what does verse 12 say? It says, and he gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors, and some teachers. Why? Till we all come in the unity of the faith. Listen, we need the apostle, the one that God made, not the one y'all made. What is an apostle elect? Who elected him? Who elected him? You are born an apostle. You are born a prophet. You are born an evangelist. You are born a pastor. Uh oh. You are born a teacher. Because we just pass out pastor like it's a goodie bag. Pastor, 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 pastor elect. Who elected him? That's like saying you black elect. You black elect. You ain't fully black yet. You got to pass a boys in the hood test and, and Friday after next. You black elect. You're born black. You were born an apostle. You're born a prophet. I can't make you one. I ain't got that kind of power. Only God can make you a prophet. Only God can determine that you are his mouthpiece. You are born an evangelist. You are born a pastor teacher. Watch this. And the assignment of the apostle, who is the, 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 the driving force that leads us in the new territory. That word apostle comes from the Greek word apostolos, which means uh, one that is skilled to do warfare on water. One that is skilled to stabilize us in unstable situations. Yet we got all these unstable apostles. I'm an apostle and you unstable. We don't, know, we don't even know where you live. I'm an apostle. No, you're not. A prophet, the seer of the church, the one that can see where we're going, the one that can check the temperature of God, the one that knows when we all playing and not serious. The, uh, the, the, the prophet. The evangelist, glory to God, the one that is designed to not listen. We think the word evangelist means a female preacher. No. An evangelist can be male or female. It is someone who is anointed to use their story and their struggle to bring people into the house of God. They go into the highways and the hedges, not running conferences and revivals. Evangelists are not revivalists. You cannot revive unless you first been vived. Revive. Revival is for the saint, not the sinner. They need to be revived. The pastor, who is not just the leader of a congregation, they usually function best leading within the congregation, not leading the congregation. The pastor is anointed to create community for the sheep. The teacher is anointed to break the word down so that we understand it. It's just, it's perfect. God is brilliant. The fivefold ministry, the hand of God, the apostle, the prophet that points to the direction, the, the, the evangelist, the longest finger that extends out, the, the, the pastor who is in covenant relationship with the church, and the teacher, the, 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 the pinky finger that has the ability to get in those hard to reach places. The teacher is how you reach into your ear and clean your ears out. And with the, the fivefold, we have the hand of God that has the power to get us out of trouble, that has the power to get us into the move of God. It is with that hand that the Lord molds us. I gave you some Issachar 101 tonight. Hallelujah. Yeah. <laughs> Sign up next year. The fivefold. Next is the fathering. The fathering. There are three types of people that come to church. There are three types of people that come to, to church. 
Some of you that will be sent out to start your own ministries. Because I'm an apostle, I send people. And some of you will. There's some of you in here that will be sent out one day. I'm going to say, hey, you, it's time to go. Let's get you going. You ain't about to sit up. You ain't about to be Joan on my boat. There are three types of people. Sojourners, students, and sons. Sojourners, students, and sons. Sojourners are people that just drift from church to church. They drift from place to place. They go everywhere. They've been a member of everybody's church. Everybody church in one year. They drift from place to place to place. They don't stay planted long enough to grow. They just they float, they, they, they uh, you know, fly like a butterfly. They sting like a bee. Just <laughs> Sojourners, listen to me. Those of you that are called to lead, leaders make some noise. Those of you that are called to lead, you give sojourners your hand. You don't give them your heart. You give them your hand. Sojourners, you give them your hand. Students, though, that's the second group. Students, those are individuals that come into your church to learn, to, 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 to get information, to receive. They're only there for a limited time, three, four, five years. They're learning. You don't give them your heart either. You give them your head. So joiners, you give them your hand. Students, you give them your head. You offer them your mind. Lastly, you have sons. And sons, you give them your heart. Sons and daughters, you give them your heart. You give them the impartation of who you are. You give them the impartation of what you care. I wish somebody would get this. You give them the impartation of what you have received. You don't just give them head knowledge. But those are individuals that have been assigned to you to grow with you. And when God expands, one is, is Prophet Keith Lloyd. He's been with me when we were uh, six people in the Lutheran Fellowship Hall. And so God has expanded us to be one church in multiple locations. He's been with me throughout the entire ride. There are certain people that are spiritual sons and daughters. And they may even go on to lead works within, within the house. But, 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 but your spiritual sons and daughters, they receive a level of impartation that others don't. They, they, they know your spirit. God, I praise you. They can recognize when, when your spirit shifts and when the atmosphere shifts, they can, they can go with you. They can pick up what the assignment and the agenda of the Holy Ghost is in the atmosphere. That spiritual sons and daughters. And listen, I want to share this with you. Your ultimate goal should be one day to be a son or daughter. Why am I saying that? Listen, and let your reje your, what you feel right now that makes you uncomfortable with what I said is called the spirit of rejection. And we're going to pray for deliverance in just a moment. I realize that that's what it is. It's sitting right there in your intellect because you're reaching for the past to gain information for your future. Can't happen. You cannot spend the rest of your life driving, looking through the rearview mirror. I want you to hear this. It is only through a spiritual father or a spiritual mother that you can be molded into who you've been called to be. Because within their mouth is identity for your next dimension. Yes, sir. Lastly, I told you what, fivefold, fathering. Lastly, the fire. Give me, uh, uh, I didn't give you the scripture for uh, the fathering. Uh, let me read this. Romans 8 and 15. I'm going to jump to this scripture. Then, then we're going to let God do what he's doing. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage, uh-oh, again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption whereby we cry, Abba, Father. Some of you can't be set free from fear because you have not embraced God as Father. You can't be set free from fear because the, 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 the anointing of a spiritual father is not present in your life. Uh, oh Lord. Come on, Bishop. Peace. Whenever you see somebody that's antsy all the time and hyper anxious, uh, that is somebody who has not experienced the ministry of a spiritual father or mother. Uh, because the, the anointing of a spiritual father teaches you to pace yourself. Yes, yes, yes. It tells you you're moving too fast. too fast. It tells you you just met them two weeks ago. Uh, you might not want to give them that ring. Morning of a spiritual father will tell you nobody's going to come to that event with that rinky dink flyer. Uh, right. Teach. 
<laughs> you're going to be right where you've always been. The anointing of a spiritual father. <laughs> Somebody ain't turning their mic off. <laughs> you know <what> I mean? <laughs> the anointing of a spiritual father will tell you that don't that that Photoshop don't look right. The anointing of a spiritual father will tell you, oh, I feel the anointing in here. The anointing of a spiritual father will tell you your character is out of out of whack. Yes, you gifted and anointed, but your character is out of whack. You think that affirmation comes through the gift. Lastly, the fire. Get me, uh, let me get Revelation chapter 3, verse, verses 14 through 18. Oh, I see God doing something in here. Revelation 3, verses 14 through 18. Hey. It says, and unto the angel of the church of the Laodiceans, write these things, saith the amen. Yeah. Saith the faithful and true witness. Ah, yeah, yeah. The beginning of the creation of God. Oh, make yourself known, Jesus. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. Uh -oh. I would that you were cold or hot. So then because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Yes, this is Jesus talking. Uh -huh. Because thou sayest I am rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing, and knowest not that thou art wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire, that thou mayest be rich and white raiment, that thou mayest be cold, that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear, and anoint thine eyes with eye salve, that thou mayest see, see meaning understand. Let me break this down to you. Revelation chapter 3, you got to stay with me real quick. Give me five minutes. Give me five minutes. I promise you, you don't need to text them back. Give me five minutes. Revelation chapter 3, watch this. It literally breaks down seven churches. The church of Ephesus, the church of Philadelphia, the church of uh, 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 Laodicea. It breaks down seven churches. Theologians and dispensationalists believe that these are seven dispensations of the church. The church of Ephesus being the, the apostolic church, the first century church, 300 years. If you look at the way Jesus describes each of these churches, pay attention. He describes each of these representing ages over the last 2,000 years. So when he comes to the church of Laodicea, he is talking about the church of 2021. He's saying, watch this, the church of 2021 is neither cold nor hot. They don't stand for nothing. They don't stand for nothing. They just believe everything. He said, I would rather you be cold or hot. I would rather you stand for something. Even if it was wrong, stand for something. He said, because you are lukewarm, I will spew thee out of my mouth, which means that the word of the Lord will be scarce. You have a whole lot of people calling themselves prophets, but only a few of them accurate. Come on, Mister. Because thou says I am rich. Oh, baby, this church says that they're richer than they've ever been. We got the biggest cathedrals. We got the biggest coliseums. And we'll build these big old buildings in the church. be surrounded by a ghetto, and they won't support anybody in the ghetto. You say I'm rich, increase with goods, and have need of nothing. Well, he couldn't have been talking about the first century church. Why couldn't he have been? Because they were all hiding. They were getting their heads chopped off by Caesar. Come on, church. They were getting fed by lions. He wasn't talking about them. They was broke. He's talking about the church of the day. You think that you're rich. You think you're increased with goods. You find your identity in your materialism. And you know it's not that you're wretched, miserable, poor, and blind, and naked. So he said, I counsel thee. I advise thee to buy of me gold Tried in the fire. So then, how does he mold me into his image? Gold tried in the fire. How does the blacksmith identify that the gold is real? How does the blacksmith identify that a gold, a, a substance is authentic gold? He puts the gold in the fire. And then he pulls the gold up and he looks at it. And he says, uh-uh. He puts it back in the fire. He pulls it out. 
He says, uh 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 uh. He puts it back in the fire. And what is he looking for? He is looking for his reflection in the gold. Because until the gold looks like him, not Nicki Minaj. Until the gold looks like him, not Megan Thee Stallion. Until the gold looks like him, not the Champagne Poppy. Until the gold looks like him. Oh, Zion, what's the matter now? Until the gold looks like him, he said, I'm going to keep putting it in the fire until you come out like me. So I'm going to put you in the fire until it burns up your nasty attitude. I'm going to put you in the fire until it burns up your respective persons. And then I'm going to look to see if you look like me. Take me back to my uh, main scripture at the, at the beginning of the text, at the beginning of the message. First John, go try the fire. He said, Go back, you were there, right there. I'm tied in all these. Now are we the sons of God, and it does not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Catch it. Is this too much? When you read the book of Isaiah for the first six chapters, it's hyperjudgmental. Isaiah is hyperjudgmental. Mm -hmm. Until he has a vision and he sees God. And he said, Behold, I am a man of unclean lips. Yeah. And I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. Which means to see God at first means to see everything in you that don't look like him. Yeah. Yeah. So every time you get a revelation of God, you're going to see just how far you are from him. That's why all of you that think you got Wi-Fi with God and you hyper-judgmental. No, every time you get in the face of God, you say, I'm a wretch undone. Every time you get in the face of God, you say, Lord, purge me all over again. Every time you get in the face of God, you say, Lord, take the attitude out. Every time you get in the face of God, you say, Lord, take out the spirit of pride. Because when I see him, I see what does not look like him. But he said, there's a day coming. Well, after you have been in the fire, according to Revelation chapter 3 and 18, that if you buy of me gold tried in the fire, there's a day coming, watch this, when we will know that when he shall appear, for we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he, we've been quoting that for years in the church and don't even know what that means. What does it mean we're going to see him as he is? That means that after he gets finished taking me through the fire, Somebody think I'm talking about the rapture. I ain't just talking about the rapture. Javel, I'm talking about every season of your life where you go through the fire like you're going through right now. Every time you come out the fire, he burns off a piece of the flesh. And you begin to look and you say, I see him a little bit more. And every time you go through the fire, he bursts prayer out of you. And every time you go through the fire, he bursts fasting out of you. And every time you go through the fire, he bursts a sweet spirit out of you. Can I tell you something? You've been in the church for 10 years, 20 years. You ought to start looking like Christ. You've been in the church for 20 years. You ought to pray like you've been in the church for 20 years. You've been in the church for 30 years. You ought to have a sound that comes out of your belly that has the power to run the kingdom of hell out of the city that you're in. Why? Because every time I go through the fire, the blacksmith, God, Jesus, pulls me up to see his reflection in me. And I got news for you. Every time you go down and come back up, he is burning out a piece of the flesh and putting more of himself in you. So how do I come into my identity? I come into my identity through the fivefold. I come into my identity through the spirit of fathering. And I come into my identity through the fire. Now listen, we're getting ready to go. I'm done because that's all my notes. When is the last time you gave God a mature praise? Listen to me carefully. I'm not talking about praising God for an open door. I'm talking about praising him for closed doors. When is the last time you praised God in the waiting? In the waiting room. Don't you know the best worship is in the waiting room? Don't you know that the best praise is while you're going through the pressure? Don't you know that the Lord is seeing what you're going to do while you're in what you're in right now? He tried to see how you're going to respond to what you're going through right now. And see, what the devil tried to tell you right now is, is girl, you ought to give up. You ought to quit. It's just that, you, you know, well, we had a good run. But can I tell you something? Whenever you get in the pain and it produces praise out of you, you get in the wake and it produces worship out of you. Don't you understand that it produces a next level to handle? Listen, Brother Trail, I'm concerned because we'll produce a generation that can't feel God unless it's a heaven V3. 
We produce a generation that can't sense God unless somebody's singing in the key of B flat. We produce a generation of people that can't sense the presence of God unless somebody's doing rips and runs. But can I tell you something? The Lord said that there's a season coming, and the season is now where I'm raising up glory carriers, people that's clearing, carrying the glory. They can't do no rips and runs, but if they holler Jesus, the whole room will be slain. Why? Because my hollering of Jesus ain't something I did off of YouTube. It ain't something I learned off of watching Sunday's Best. My hollering Jesus, God, I praise him, was the same Jesus I hollered when I was in the worst storm of my life. And that same Jesus that had the power to break strongholds and break storms, that when I open up my mouth and begin to holler, everything in the atmosphere shifts. Why? Because the devil even recognizes my sound. He says, that's that same person that knocked me out of commission back in 2020 when I thought I was going to take her mind. And so when she starts hollering, something in the atmosphere, oh God, something in the atmosphere begins to, because the and the Lord and delivers them of all of troubles. Don't you know that everything that you've been through is connected to your cry? Everything that you have fought through is connected to your sound. And when you release that sound, breakthrough comes in the atmosphere. Listen, I want you to hear this. And somebody, I don't know how you're going to feel about this. But everybody watching me live, everybody listening to me, the season of the counterfeit is over. Counterfeit anointings, counterfeit gifts, counterfeit oil. And the Lord said there's a new generation that's arising and they're not going to shout because it sounds good. There's a new generation that they will only respond to the presence of God. There's a new generation arising, hallelujah. Why dwell in the knockoff when you can pay the price and have the real thing? I know the knockoff is cheaper. I know the knockoff is easier to get on the street. But there are some things you ought to want that's authentically from God. I don't want to knock off anointing. I don't want to knock off power. I want to know that when I get up and pray, every demon and devil backs up. And we're not going to play games, not in this house. This is going to be a house of authentic glory. This is going to be a house of an authentic anointing. There's something coming in this room right now. Because those that are prophetic, particularly prophets, I'm talking your language. Because anybody that's been praying in the spirit concerning this ministry, anybody that's been in the spirit concerning this house, what's been in your spirit is God, don't let us become a knockoff. Don't let us be under a false presence, worshiping a false spirit, not recognizing that when the real spirit of God comes into the room, burdens are removed and yokes are destroyed. When the real spirit of God comes in the room, God begins to heal bodies and, and change lives. I don't know about you, but in this season, I don't just want some generic move of God. I want the real thing. And the Lord said, the only way it's going to happen is that I respond to me. When I see my identity in you, I respond with my glory and with my presence. I want everybody in here to break out worshiping God. Listen, I know I'm a little over time, but I want everybody to break out worshiping God. Come on, because I feel something in this room. I'm talking to glory carriers in this room. I'm talking to glory carriers. I'm talking to glory carriers. What is your identity? Christ. Christ is my identity. Christ is my identity. Elders, pastors, stop wearing these around your neck if you are not willing to die to yourself. Because the reason why we wear those collars, these collars that we wear around our neck represent the chokes that they wore. God, I feel your glory in here. In the first century church, when the Christians were being beheaded for preaching. And so what the real preachers started doing is they said, we're not going to hide that we are Christian anymore. They started wearing the chokes around their neck and saying, if you're going to kill me, kill me. But I'm going to preach this gospel. 
which means you should not preach it unless you're willing to die for it. I want everybody in here that says what I had before is not enough. That was good. But it's not enough. I need more. I need more of God. I need more of his presence. More of his glory. I want you for the next five minutes to take a posture of worship. Any posture of worship, whether that's standing, kneeling, bowing, walking, but any posture of worship that disrupts the comfort of your flesh. I'm going to take a posture of worship. And as you begin to worship, I sense that something is getting ready to break loose in this place. Because I refuse to continue the way that I started. I refuse to continue with an old expired anointing. I want everybody to begin to open up your mouth and begin to worship. Because I see something coming right now in this place. It's so heavy. It's so heavy. It's so heavy. It's all back there. Sister Collins, all of y'all lift up your hands back there because there's something coming for y'all. Come on, begin to receive that breakthrough anointing. It never fails. That while there are people in the front room trying to rub elbows with the right people and, and trying to kiss up to the right people, that there's a David on the back side of the desert. And David is always found worshiping. David is always found crying out to God. And he was the one that the moment God made a paradigm shift, that he brought him from the back to the front. Just because you're the most popular doesn't make you the most powerful. But the Lord said that there's a shift that's coming. And I'm getting ready to raise up those of you that have been in the back side of the desert. Come on, I want you to begin to stir yourself. Open up your mouth tonight. Rabba go show it. to the ark. You are a carrier of the ark of glory. 
and the Lord stirs you by fire. Whoa, 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 whoa. The Lord stirs you by fire. I found my Come on, declare the Lord. Come on, get lost in it. Get lost in it. Come on, get lost in that glory. As you sing it, forget about everybody around you. Make it intimate with you and God. You and the Father. Nobody but you and Him right now. Come on. Forget about your title. Forget about your name. Forget about your reputation. Forget about your ministry, your business. Try me over and over again. Begin to worship it. Come on, open up your mouth. Come on. Come on, release us now. Worship it. Come on, you and your home right there. Come on. I feel the glory. Let's sing it one more time. Whoa. everything that I thought I wanted to be. God, everything, every accolade I traded that I may have your authentic glory. Give me you, Father. 
nothing else will do. Give me you, God. Oh, my shed it about you. I wish somebody would decree that. You can take the title, all of it. I just want the glory of God. When I come in the house of God, I don't even have to be acknowledged. I just want the glory. I feel fire coming in here, y'all. The Lord said that you cannot have fire upon an empty altar. You cannot have fire upon an empty altar. <laughs> but the Lord said, the sacrifice I want is you. A broken heart and a contrite spirit. We find ourselves in you. Light me on your altar, send me your fire on this altar. Find me on the altar, yeah. send me your fire upon this altar. Send me your fire upon this altar. Yeah. Send me your fire upon this altar. Send me your fire, fire upon this altar. Send me your fire on this altar. Send me your fire upon this altar. Send me your fire on this altar. Send me your fire. Let it burn away. Let it burn away. Let it burn away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on. Let it burn away. Let it burn away. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let it burn away. Let it burn away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let it burn away. Everybody, one more time. Say, see me on fire. Hey, hey, hey. On this song. Yeah, 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 yeah. See me on fire. Upon this altar, see me on fire. Upon this altar, see me on fire. Upon this altar, let it burn away. Let it burn away. Fire. Let it burn away. Let it burn away. Let it burn away. Let it burn away. What's not like you? 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 Let it burn away. What's not like? Let it burn away. We're getting ready to go. Everybody, ooh, get a seat in this song. Oh, yeah, let it burn away. Let it burn away. Look at somebody and say, for the rest of this year, I'm going for glory. I wish I could hear somebody say that. Say, for the rest of this year, I'm running after the glory. For the rest of this year, I'm running after the presence. I ain't chasing people. I ain't chasing titles. I ain't chasing approval. For the rest of this year, I'm going for the presence. I'm going after glory. I'm going after the glory. For the rest of this year. For the rest of this year. For the rest of this year. Get 
take that seed. If you need to envelop our Levites or walking around, Woo. there's glory. I'm so drunk in the spirit right now. And hold that tithe up. Who's tithing tonight? One, two, three. Four, five. Very good. If you're tithing online, you tithe tithe. Let it feel this room. 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 Those of you that are tithing, I lose the covenant blessing upon you. Increase nothing missing, nothing broken. I speak a breakout anointing upon you that the windows of heaven are open up over your head. I decree that the Lord is enlarging your territory. The Lord is bringing you increase. May the Lord multiply the work of your hand. May the Lord breathe upon the work of your hand. After the order of Melchizedek, may you experience the blessing of Abraham as he was obedient to the Most High God. May you experience the favor of Jehovah Jireh upon your money. We decree it, we declare it. Even the favor of Jehovah Baal Perez be multiplied upon your money. We decree it right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Everyone else, let's stand as we prepare to sow tonight. We're going to do our offertory confessions. I'm so drunk in the spirit, God. Do these agree? Let's prepare to do these operatory confessions. I tell you, Bahaya, Shakara Basa. One, two, three. As we proceed today's tithe offerings and first fruits, we declare that as a church, this is our breakout 2021 year. We call in all the necessary finances to build this church. I know so much lack financial resources and great wealth. We decree over every powerhouse family, jobs and better jobs, raises and bonuses, benefits, sales and commissions, favorable settlements, estates and inheritances, interest and income, rebates and return, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, finding money, debts paid off, expenses decrease, blessings and increase, heavens open, earth invaded, storehouses unlocked, and miracles created, dreams and visions, angelic visitations, declarations, impartations, and divine manifestations. Thank you, Lord, for meeting all my financial needs, that I may have more than enough 
to give into the kingdom of God and promote the gospel of Jesus Christ. Money coming to the body of Christ. Money coming to me now. You are bringing me into my wealthy place. God, we thank you that you're bringing us into our wealthy place. We thank you that you're enlarging our territory. You've given us nothing missing, nothing broken. And so we thank you, Lord, that we're going to see the, uh, 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 your hand increasing us and stretching out our territory. In Jesus' name, all that agree that it is so, and it shall not be otherwise. Come on, bring that seed from all over this place. Those of you online can begin to sow. Our cash app is Cash Sign PH Global Network, or you can go to www.phglobalnetwork.org or any of our campus websites, Powerhouse Church Shy, Powerhouse Church Indy, and you can sow now. <laughs> I want to remind you to get to for habitation. Also, we have a sponsorship opportunity. For those of you that are business owners, you have the ability to sponsor habitation at any of our sponsorship levels. And uh, I'm going to give you a space to talk about your business at the conference. Give you a space to share what it is that you do as a blessing to the kingdom of God. Also, don't forget, we're still collecting clothes for our Kakuma camp in Kenya. We want you to sow. Uh, 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 clothing, gently used clothing and be a blessing uh, uh, unto them. I don't want you to forget, uh, this Sunday is our Power Sunday. Uh, I'm going to be giving away money this Sunday to the winner from last uh, Power Sunday. Uh, and we're also going to be giving away money again to the individual who brings the most visitors this How many of y'all are being blessed by this Jesus series? I love preaching about Jesus. God, we're getting ready to go. Don't forget, um, April 9th, we're going to have a night of prayer in here. Uh, starting at 7 o'clock, I want you to meet us here for a night of prayer. I want the worship team. We're going to worship. We're going to uh, uh, have the, the prophetic dance team, fire dance ministry go forth. We're going to um, uh, do some powerful prophetic things on that night and just be, see the things of God. April 9th, that Friday night, you want to make sure you're here. April 4th, Easter Sunday. Easter Sunday is April 4th. And uh, you want to make sure you're in the house of God. And also, Good Friday. Uh, you want to make sure you're here uh, uh, for that as well. Amen. We're gonna do, I think we're going to do the seven last words of Christ. And have the saints preach. <laughs> All right, let's get ready to go. Father, we bless you for what you've done in this house tonight. We glorify you for your presence. We thank you for that breakthrough anointing that you release in the midst of us. The Spirit of the living God, oh yes. Meet us here tomorrow night for Issachar 201. And God, we're gonna meet you here tomorrow night for Issachar 201 for that monthly prophetic training. Our Shamar teams, prophetic teams, all the above. And we thank you, O God, for what you're getting ready to do, what you're releasing in this ministry. We thank you, O God, that it's our season for grace and favor. And we give you the glory because we know all is well. Everybody that has been sick is no longer sick. We call them healed now. We thank you for healing, revival, resurrections, restoration. Because we know Jesus Christ, you never attended any funerals. When you showed up, the funeral turned into a resurrection. So we give you the glory. Because we thank you that over the next few days, you're going to show up. And all we need to do is just show up. And we know that once you do that, all is well. And everything is under control. So we give you the glory. We're not worried about it. We have no fear. We're walking in faith and expectation. Because we can't wait to see how you're going to do it this time, God. We give you the hey, glory. We give you the honor. We give you the praise. In the name of Shandalabakasa. In Jesus' name. All that agree said is so. And it shall not, it be, shall otherwise. not be otherwise. Amen. Amen. On your way out, I want you to 
hug or, or, or dap or, or, or slap three people and tell them. Identity code. <laughs>